Welcome to my continuing coverage of the various classes and loadouts of Battlefield 4 viewers. This is Winshear. Today I'm discussing a further depth of the uh, support class and that being the mortar strike. That uh, piece of equipment you can lock the M224 mortar. And as you can see up here, let's talk about the bad right off the bat. See some guys up there on top of that roof. A common occurrence that we see in Battlefield 4 and we are really counting on this piece of equipment being able to counter that tactical advantage that those recons exploit with their elevation advantage. It's something I've always preached in this game that the elevation advantage always gives you a huge tactical advantage in this game. So I figured let's pull out the mortar and see if we can uh, address this and I'm not being very successful. I'm getting a little frustrated with this. I'm like how are these mortar strikes not hitting this because by now I've had quite a bit of experience with this, with this piece of equipment. I've got over 100 kills now with it. And I cannot understand for life of me, it's not just this map, it's every map that I play on. You can clearly see the mortars not hitting where they're intended to when I'm targeting rooftops. And this is across all spectrum. So this is a huge glitch that I have observed so far with the mortar strike. It's completely, and I will say with confidence, completely ineffective in these situations. And let me pause this here for a moment so you can clearly see. Okay, maybe I'm, I thought maybe I'm aiming too far, so let me push back further here. You'll see me clearly aim well past this mark on this building. I aim way, what, two-thirds up the building here? Watch where this mortar strike falls and watch the effect it has. I mean, it's, it's not even close to where I'm putting it, and it's not even detonating or doing anything. So clearly, the mortar is not just on this map at all. It's completely ineffective on this, and then you get sniped. <laughs> so uh, hopefully DICE will address this, uh, because... In Battlefield uh, 4 Beta, I mean, the rooftop camping was just, it was just uh, ev evident everywhere. Everybody was doing it, and a lot of us were counting on this mortar strike, hopefully being able to address those campers up there, because this device, I will say, let me show you the good now, it's incredible. Uh, th this device is great. I don't know how many times I'll be running down this map, this is Operation Locker Room here on a huge flanking route on, out here in the open. I don't know how many times we'll be run out here in the open. I'll see a, a sniper uh, scope glint camped up, up up there on the mountain. I'm like, oh shit, you know, I got jump down real quick, fall behind cover. I pull out my mortar strike and boom, he's taken care of it. He didn't see that one coming. So this thing is great for disposing of recon class uh, campers. Uh, and, you know, not to harp on you, on you recon guys right now. I mean, you're doing your job. I, I know you're enjoying Battlefield 4 because the recon class is seeing a huge buff. I mean, the one-shot kills are just amplified uh, many times over, I think, compared to Battlefield 3. I am just getting destroyed by recons all day long, close range. I mean, it feels like COD-like almost, but, you know, hats off to you if you can handle a bolt-action sniper, because I can't do it. Your aim has to count for something. I think you should be rewarded if you do pull off that hit. Uh, but you can see here, in congested areas, this is a place you don't want to be. This is an attack you don't see coming. You don't want to conjugate around objectives because uh, people like me, support class, really can take, an, take a toll on the battlefield with this weapon. Uh, now, in terms of my strategy here with this, you're seeing me throw in an ammo crate. It's good to deploy the bipod, then go back to your ammo crate so you will replenish your mortar attack. Then you only have five shots in this thing right off the back. Now, now it's import important to note that if you have the... the uh, I keep calling them squad perks, but the field upgrade, indirect fire, you will get an additional mortar strike attack as you progress uh, in your squad uh, field upgrade. So it's important to note that too. So instead of five shells, I think you get six or seven, something like that. So bear that in mind too. But right off the bat, you start off with five shells. Once you exhaust that, that payload, you essentially it will gradually re reload itself over time, but it's really not that quick. So if you're sitting on top of an ammo crate, you get a new one right off the bat. So once you exhaust your five shells, go out and put another one down, take cover again. And of course, this is a remote mortar, guys. So you don't have to be right next to it like I am here. But of course, I'm confident behind enemy line or behind friendly lines here that I'm I'm protected. And more more important than anything right now is time. So I'm trying to deliver the maximum amount of offensive power with this weapon in the shortest amount of time. So I'm quickly going out, deploying a bipod, deploying the mortar going back, exhausting my payload, going out redeploying it again. So that's kind of the, the mindset you have to do if you're trying to deliver a lot of firepower quickly. And you can see in those confined quarters of the Operation uh, Locker Room area that uh, it's really effective. If, if the, the enemy is all bunched up around each other, nothing disperses them quicker than a mortar strike. 
Now, out here in the open on this map, I forgot the name of this map, the railroad map, I think is what it's called. Something along those lines. Again, snipers all over this map. It's a wide open map. I mean, all day long you see snipers perched up in these rocks across the map, hiding behind cover, conjugating, you know, mingling back there and chuckling it up. Hey, I just sniped this guy across the map, 155 meters or 300 meter shot. Well, guess what? A mortar's going on your head right now. And uh, UAVs, incredibly effective. Commander mode, this is where, uh, I don't know if you, if you noticed them in the uh, previous uh, file there I was just uploading on Operation Locker Room. UAVs in the commander mode are really effective for giving me uh, guidance to where to direct my uh, strike. Uh, without that situational awareness, I'm really kind of firing the blind a lot of times. I have to predict enemy movement a lot. But for the most part, um, if uh, somebody spotted two on the map, that really makes it significant. Obviously, if the enemy's sitting still, that makes this a much more effective weapon. Uh, the, if they're moving or running, chances are of you getting a one-shot kill are, are minimal. Even a lot of times, if they are standing still, you're still not going to get a one-shot kill with this. Now, I've heard some um, recommendations from viewers that have used this weapon as well. You notice the crosshair changing as you fire this. From It goes from op like an open type of spread to a smaller spread as you shoot the, the mortar. They, they recommend that the timing between firing your first mortar and your second one, that you wait until you fire the second mortar until those crosshairs have come to this small dot right there. And they recommend that to increase your accuracy. I've, I've attempted that, that tactic. Um, I have, I've had minimal su success with that, employing that tactic. The reason why is because I find a lot of times having that quick mortar with the splash damage on the second fire hitting in, the, in roughly the same area, that splash damage more often than, than not is enough to eliminate the target uh, when, they're, when they start to move. Because I feel like that pause that you take waiting for those crosshairs to uh, align the second time, by the time you fire again, usually the enemy has figured out what's going on and they've run off. And by the time that tar the, the mortar hits the second time, more often than not the splash damage is no, no longer in vicinity to kill the, the opponent. So more often than not you see me just quickly spam it two times in a row just to try to get that second mortar in that same vicinity quickly to uh, finish off the enemy. You guys can employ either tactic. That just is what I found out working for me thus far. Uh, of course, you know, with this game as it's patched, who knows what will happen if we get enough people belly aching about this mortar strike. Just like we did in Battlefield 3, the developers will eventually nerf it. And uh, we can all, at least I can say, with over 400 kills in Battlefield 3, the mortar was pretty useless in the late patching stages uh, of Battlefield 3 because so many people complain about its OP. It kills too quickly, this and that, so they reduce the damage significantly. And it, it all, more or not, all it really did was just kind of annoy you and force you to disperse, and really, you really got kills if you sustained damage from before. But I'm finding this to be a very effective tool in the battlefield. Like I say, I already have 100 kills with this thing, and it's funny that I have not been killed by this device once. So I know we're still early in the, the stages of Battlefield 4 release. A lot of people are not exploring the class of the support class because, again, they want the best guns. Personally, I'm, I'm finding a lot of success with this class. Um, I really recommend this class. It's a very versatile class. Um, if for situations like this, I mean, what, what better way to deal with recons than something like this? I mean, I personally can't snipe against recons. And if, you're, if you are a recon and you're shooting down or looking down your scope, trying to shoot at three or four guys, I mean, you can only pick one at a time. And if you got four guys looking back at you, you really don't stand much of a chance. So this is a very vital tool for the battlefield. Again, I just wish it were effective in urban environments. I mean, not having the ability to, to shoot targets on top of, uh, on top of elevation uh, really kind of negates the whole point of having this attack. So for the moment, just utilize this weapon in these type of situations where you have recons behind cover on the ground, um, and uh, it will still be an effective tool for, for combating uh, you know, whenever your weapon has a range disadvantage. Uh, so to bear this in mind, I hope this video helps you out, guys. Uh, it's also worth noting, too, I guess I'll add this in, too, there is no longer smoke with, this, with the mortar. Uh, that used to be a, a previous uh, loadout you could do in Battlefield 3, put smoke out on the battlefield. Now they've replaced that with the uh, XM, the Airburst uh, 2.5 uh, 
uh, support class uh, equipment as well. So you can put smoke on that. I've used that as well. The smoke's just not nearly as, as dense as what I would like it to be, but it's there. But uh, bear in mind, we do not have alternate munitions for the uh, support class mortar strike as of yet. Uh, but quickly here, I ran through a 17 kills fairly quickly on this map. It was kind of an aggravation to the enemy team, I'm sure. Um, I don't know if it's really rewarding to sit here and do this all day long. I mean, there's some strategy involved and predicting where the enemy is moving, what they're thinking, where they will take cover after that first mortar strike. Um, and obviously recognizing where the flaking routes are, where the enemy's pushing up. So, I mean, there is some, some strategy with this and all all. But um, at least personally, I just like to pull this out in a pinch whenever I see a uh, situation present itself where... Obviously, I'm at a disadvantage with the recon class, or I see a lar large area of people conjugating in an area or around an objective, or we just need to break a stalemate. That's really where I see this tactic employed. I just personally would not like to sit here the whole match and just sit here and spam mortars the whole match. I, personally, I don't look too highly on that type of gameplay. Um, however, for the sake of this video, that's kind of what I was doing. But look at this area just light up here with targets around the objective. People are thinking about running in on that bomb, and uh, you might want to think twice about that sometimes. Uh, again, this tactic it, it's effective. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this a whole match because you will eventually be uh, you'll eventually be uh, surrounded by somebody at some point, which eventually happens here at the end with the recon guy. But quickly, 17 kills. Nonetheless, it's effective tool out in the open air like this. Hopefully, they can address the. Uh, the roof uh, issue with this. Uh, I don't know if that's just a glitch I'm seeing or if you guys have seen it, but look at this explosion right here in that mortar. Boom. <laughs> I don't know what that thing hit, but it sure put out a hell of a of explosion. I think that might be the uh, the uh, interactive maps there, the uh, levolution factor there uh, that uh, may have been employed as well. Hope you guys like the video. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget the effectiveness of this tool on the battlefield, the mortar and the support class.